You're welcome. We want to take you live to Kennedy Space Center in Florida. There you see SpaceX founder Elon Musk holding a news conference after today's successful launch of the Falcon Heavy rocket. Let's listen in. Uh, I'm still trying to absorb everything that happened because it uh, seems surreal to me. Um, you know, I had this uh, image of uh, just a giant explosion on the pad with, you know, a wheel bouncing down the road. <laughs> And uh, like the Tesla logo landing somewhere <laughs> with a thud. <laughs> um, but um, fortunately, that's not what happened. Um, the uh, mission seems to have gone uh, really as, as well as one could have hoped, uh, with the exception of the Center Corps. The, that was the two side boosters. If you guys are here, you saw them land. Uh, that was epic. I think that's probably the most exciting thing I've ever seen literally ever um, and uh, and then the the center core uh, <laughs> obviously didn't land on the drone ship but we would have shown that um, and um, I mean we, we were looking at the issue but I think it's it's uh, it, it, it didn't have enough propellant to relight the um, all, all three engines uh, sorry enough uh, for what's called t tab triathlon lumen triathlon boron that's used to light the engines so it, um, I believe that the center one lit, I believe, and the outer two did not. Um, and that was not enough to slow the stage down. Apparently it hit the water at 300 miles an hour um, and uh, took out two of the engines on the drone ship. So if we, if we got the footage, like that sounds like some pretty fun footage. Um, so if, <laughs> if the cameras didn't get blown up as well, then we'll, we'll put that out. Um, for uh, you know, just the blooper reel. Um, but that, that's near the end. We weren't going to reuse the set, that, that center core anyway, um, uh, or, or the two side boosters. So side boosters, we'll figure out some place to put them. But um, since they're not uh, block five or version five, uh, we weren't planning on reusing any of the, the cores. Um, the upper stage seems to have worked um, perfectly so far. Uh, the two bones were executed correctly, and um, then we'll see if uh, the upper stage avionics survive uh, quite an arduous trip th uh, through the Van Allen belts. Uh, normally, uh, uh, the stage will pass very quickly through the Van Allen belts. Here, it's essentially dwelling there um, for, for several hours. Um, and then it's going to do a restart, um, uh, deplete its propellant, and go to Transmars uh, injection. And um, the propellant levels all look good. Uh, the propellant, after the, after the second burn of the upper stage, we were um, only 0.3 sigma uh, away from predictions, so which is basically very minor. Um, so it, it has plenty of propellant to complete the uh, Transmars injection, assuming that uh, the fuel doesn't freeze and the oxygen doesn't, bo oxygen doesn't boil off and the electronics don't get fried. <laughs> So those are the issues. Um, we'll find out in a few hours if that if that burn is successful. Um, I think if there's anything else I know that's worth worth mentioning. Um, I went out I went out to the landing zone, took a look at the side boosters. Um, they look in, in really good condition. Um, so they're they're both reflyable. Uh, although as I said, they're um, combination of version three and version four. So we will, <clears throat> we're only going to be reflying really version five at, the, at this point. Uh, that, that launches shortly. And that, that'll be our mainstay. We'll, we'll stick to version five for the Falcon architecture. We don't expect to have a version six. Uh, all right, any questions that I haven't answered? I'll, I'll do my best to answer them, but I'm not sure if I have the information yet, but I'll try. So we're going to start in the room. Okay. And the first question goes to David Curley from ABC News. Elon, spectacular. What did you learn? What did Falcon Heavy teach you? Uh, teaches, I guess, told me like crazy things can come true. Um, like, because I, uh, he said, like, I didn't really think this would work. Because um, when I see the rocket lift off, I see like a thousand things that that could not work, and it's amazing when they do. Um, And I was really, the, the, seeing the two boosters land synchronized, really just like the simulation, 
Um, I mean, it makes me think like you, there really that could be quite a scalable approach. You know, you could imagine large numbers of those just coming in, landing, taking off, landing, doing many flights per day. Um, so it, I think it gives me a lot of faith for our next architecture, the, the sort of the interplanetary uh, spaceship. Um, we have different names for it, but BFR is kind of a code name. And I, I, it gives me confidence that BFR um, is really quite workable. Um, but I was actually looking at the side boosters and like, they're pretty big, you know, 16 stories tall, uh, 60 foot leg span. Um, but you really, we need to be way bigger than that. Um, so, so I think uh, it's given me a lot of confidence that we can make the uh, BFR design work. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I mean, I have a tremendous confidence, obviously, in the SpaceX team. So, I think I think we can really do this a lot, you know, and and, and keep advancing the, the keep advancing the technology to achieve um, full and rapid reusability, uh, which have, would have a profound effect on the future. And one of the interesting things about, say, Falcon Heavy versus Falcon 9 is that Falcon Heavy has the same level of expendability as Falcon 9. So if you look at, say, the, the, the price of Falcon 9 is $60 million, Falcon Heavy is 90, even though it's got three times as much capability. Because in both cases, the only thing that's expended is the upper stage. We're going to start recovering the, the, the fairings, the big nose cone. We're going to recover that, recover the boosters. And so there's really, the cost difference really between a Falcon 9 and a Falcon Heavy is minor. Well, the next question from Marsha Dunn at Associated Press. Um, Marsha Dunn, AP. What, were your, what was going through your mind? How, how amazed were you to see your roadster up there with Starman uh, just cruising along with the Blue Planet? And how long will we be getting live views, do you think, from the car? Well, I think it looks so ridiculous and impossible. Um, and you can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> like, we'd have way better CGI if it was fake. Um, and, you know, the, the, the colors all look like, kind of weird in space. There's no atmospheric occlusion. You know, you know like, everything looks too crisp. Um, and, um, but, we you know, we didn't really test any of those materials for, you know, is it space hardened or whatever, you know? So it just has the same seats that, like, a normal car has. It's just literally a normal car in space, which I kind of like the absurdity of that. Um, and if you look closely, there's a, on the dashboard, there's a tiny roadster with a tiny spaceman. <laughs> so, because Hot Wheels made a Hot Wheels roadster, and a, and a friend of mine uh, um, suggested, hey, why don't you put that Hot Wheels roadster with a tiny spaceman on the, you know, in the car, too? I'm like, that'd be cool. Sure. <laughs> so we did that. Um, I mean, it's kind of silly and fun, but I, I think... I think that's, you know, silly fun things are important. Um, and <laughs> normally for a new rocket, you know, they'd launch like a block of concrete or something like that. I mean, that's so boring. <laughs> um, and uh, I think that's just the imagery of it is something that's going to get people excited around the world. Um, and it's, it's still tripping me out. I mean, I'm tripping balls here. <laughs> well, next question in the room. How about Brendan Byrne from WMFE, the NPR affiliate in Orlando? Yeah, congratulations, Elon. Great launch today. Um, where do you see the Falcon Heavy fitting into this launch industry? Is this something that is going to be for more national security? All right, you've been listening to Elon Musk there talking about SpaceX's successful launch of its Falcon Heavy rocket. A successful launch, but as we heard from Musk there a short time ago, not necessarily a fully successful mission in that that center core booster did not land on its drone ship as had been intended. In fact, Elon Musk said that that center booster hit the water at 300 
100 miles and, per uh, hour. The plan we'll was for it to land back on that autonomous drone ship. It didn't do that. Um, nevertheless, Elon Musk there saying that it taught me crazy things can come true, meaning that the launch itself and everything going according to plan of the Falcon Heavy, essentially three rockets bolted together, um, was something that he said, quote, I didn't think this could work. We're going to continue to monitor this, and we should tell you that our CBS News space consultant, Bill Harwood, is also in the room there. We will bring you uh, more 